So we have to talk about World War Three, mm. or at least uh, how about we just talk about the Middle East, man? Israel, United States, and allies have intercepted um, a lot of stuff. I don't yeah, know. Like so let's three hundred. Let's, let's talk about this, this little article here, okay? And the reason I chose this article because it's all over the the X, the Twitter, which we're going to break it down in segments. This is our first segment on this because there's a lot to talk about, but. Originally, the mud hen people, which pains me to say, <laughs> the world's greatest bomber, had all the glory. And then today, at the 11th hour before this show, they updated it and said a U.S. official added the... I'll even forgive them for calling them the Fighting Falcons, oh. because now the F-16 has shot some down, too, which I'm like, ah, oh, thank you. Notably absent, however, is 5th Gen. Yeah. All the... Abyss Amelia's and the Raptor nerds. Red ball. And Red ball. Oh, yeah. They're broken. <laughs> cold iron. We got cold iron. iron. Yeah. Uh, they could not be bothered for something. They can only come out when the Su 57 comes out to play. All right. So here's our article for the day. I'm going to zoom in because Doug does that. Dude, I don't know. Can wow. you read this? Can you see this? Uh, I, Air I Force. Think... Yeah. Yeah, do uh, it, man. Can I go? All right. Yeah. So uh, F-15E Strike Eagles, the Mud Hen, and F-16 Fighting Falcons shot down dozens of Iranian Iranian drones as they were heading toward targets in Israel on April 13th. That was a couple days ago as of this episode. Uh, it was Strike Eagles from the 494th Fighter Squadron and the 335th Fighter Squadron. I think that's Lake and Heath. Uh, yep. downing more than 70 Iranian drones. But on April 15th, the U.S. official noted that F-16s were involved in the shootdowns as well. A Patriot battery in Iraq took down a ballistic missile, and the USS Arleigh Burke and USS Kearney in the Eastern Med took down four to six ballistic missiles, the officials added. Joe Biden then called them and said, thank you, good job. <laughs> uh, the attack consisted of more than 100 ballistic missiles, which we're going to look at here separately, 30 land attack cruise missiles, and 150 drones. They said it intercepted missiles and drones uh, launched from Iran. Oh, launched from Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Yemen. Holy crap. U.S. and Israeli officials said that 99% of the drones and missiles were intercepted. I think like seven weren't um, of this. So the close cooperation between the U.S. military and the IDF has led to the formation of strong coalition that proved itself last night in the face of Iran's aerial attack. While Israel mounted its defense with the Arrow 2 and Arrow 3 surface-to-air interceptors and fighters, U.S. coordinated the air, air defense for the coalition forces at the Com Combined Air Operations Center, also known as the CAOC, uh, where AFSENT boss, Lieutenant General Alexis, oh boy, I'm not even going to try that, uh, he was the regional air defense commander. Biden ordered extra F-15s and destroyers, which carry the highly capable Aegis air defense system. Uh, and then here is him saying, do we want to watch this? Thanks, guys. Merry yeah. Christmas. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, God, dude. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that Just... was awful, dude. For... Sorry, man. Just... We take mm, whatever stuff. assets we have there at theater under our tactical control, direct support. It's been a lot that's been accomplished. Uh, the UK was also involved. Uh, the typhoon uh, was also in the region, uh, shooting down drones. And I Did, think didn't the Jordanians use F-16s? Yeah, I was, that's what I was about to get. Uh, mm. the, I, there was, and I don't know if this is verified, deep intel, actual intel, no intel. Um, the Jordan. Oh boy. That one's not a good look. That zoom works. Uh, huh? <laughs> that zoom works. <laughs> yeah. The Jordanian princess, which, uh, pretty cool. She shot some down herself. I don't know if that's true or not. I just saw it on Twitter and you know, everything on Twitter is true, <clears throat> but yeah. she shot some down, but okay, let's, I mean, this is a serious thing. Luckily, none managed to go through the, I mean, we're talking three layers of defense, right? So, uh, and there's different pundits. I want to get your thoughts on this gonky as somebody who's been in the middle East a lot. The Iranians telegraphed like a big dog. 
right? Yeah. They knew they were, they even, there was an article about them asking nearby countries, like letting them know that, Hey, we're doing this. We're going to be flying through your airspace. You know, this is going to happen. Uh, it, it was in the news even for days before this happened. And in fact, they had their parade where they rerouted all their, their air parade where they rerouted the Tom Tomcats, uh, away, uh, from their parade, you know, in the different part of the country, everybody kind of knew this was going to happen. So there's two schools of thought. One is, you know, the Israelis killed, um, their general, which is the same level guy that we killed way back in the day. And in that scenario, they bombed our base, but didn't hit anything. And so it was one of those, we telegraphed it. We kind of gave you a warning. We knew, and, uh, you know, it, it, it gave them a show of force because in that part of the world, the Iranian people are not bad. It's the assholes at the top that are bad. And so the way a dictator or the way a, a, a totalitarian regime stays in power is by keeping the thumb off on the people. And the way you maintain power is by flexing, you know, showing that you're strong. So we can't let something like, cause they're off telling their people that it was a great success and you know, all the propaganda and all that stuff in the, in that part of the world that works and you know, they, they think it's a great success. And now they're like, Hey, look, we did our thing. Any retaliation, we're going to have to do this again. End of story. The second school of thought is that that's not the case. The fact that they sent 300 different types of projectiles to overwhelm, which is something that we've seen in the Ukrainian or, you know, the Ukrainian, Ukrainian conflict where, they overwhelm with these small drones, these smaller projectiles, ballistic missiles, stuff like that. And it just so happens that we were successful. You know, what if, what if we had failed? And then there's the third that they're prodding, you know, that, that that's their technique, right? They prod, they poke, they, they, they have now, they now have a footprint of how U S and Israeli defenses work. They depleted, a, you know, several billion dollars worth of, assets to shoot these stuff these things down and this is just kind of a precursor to something else what do you think i mean of these three kind of what what, what makes the most sense based on your experience <clears throat> well <laughs> um i don't know man i would i would say uh I mean, you hit the nail on the head. There, there's, I, I think there's a lot more going on there than obviously the, the media has shown us. But, you know, you bring up the point of like, hey, you know, a, a weaker regime trying to control the people, not losing face. Well, you know, just from some of the research I did today, I would argue that probably both sides are a little bit like that, you know, so nobody wants to lose face in this. So, yeah, the Israelis attacked uh, the Iranian embassy, right? Killed their general. They ha The Iranians have to do something, right? Um, you know, I, I, I think they telegraphed it. I think it's a, I think it's kind of a show, man. I mean, think about this. You said those F-15 shot down 70 drones. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and they're Lake and Heath birds. I mean, I, I don't know. I think they're you know, Lake and Heath. I, I'm not sure. I would have to, we don't have. E even if they're not, I mean, logistically, like, mm -hmm. you know, they launched now granted, you know, the drones got to travel quite a ways to get to where they're going and, and whatnot. But like, that's, that's a lot of firepower that has to be airborne amongst even strike eagles. So there, there has to be some planning involved. They had like, there ha you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Yeah. And for sure. And logistically, like if we just put ourselves as fighter pilots in the cockpits of the Vipers, cause I don't, I don't know. <laughs> So I need the gas. I need the yeah. gas. <laughs> well, so, well, we don't have, no, you don't get the gas when you're comparing it to a mud in. They still have more fuel, but you know, we have, yeah. they have half as much SA because there's two of them. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> but in that scenario, you know, dude, that's a lot of targets. That's a, that's a saturated thing. Friendly fire is, is probably a huge consideration, you know, target recognition, target ID, uh, weapons tight, like you're, yeah. there's so many considerations for you in the, in the jet to shoot these things down. I mean, I remember in, a, in a, Iraq, one drone, you know, that was a big deal. I mean, 70 trying to ID well, intercept all that stuff. That's what I'm saying. Like, imagine, 
you know, I'm sitting alert on the carrier and they're like, holy cow, you know, there's 300 projectiles coming launch. You know, like uh, if, if you go with the ROE during peacetime, it's significantly different than the ROE during a known possible attack, right? Yeah. A known attack is going to be a lot more aggressive, which I think in order to shoot 70 of these things, I mean, you're talking probably, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, man, 79 X's and AMRAMs, right? I mean. Yeah, I don't think they're using the gun. I think they're, no, they're shooting no, 9 X's more than likely. Yeah, and you're not, uh, you know, uh, it, that's that's a big deal to hose one of those off. I mean, we we shot them in training, and it's like, you know, if there's a, <laughs> yeah, well, but, but right, if there's if there's a boat within like a hundred miles, they're like, nope, call it off. Yeah. You know, no, it's too dangerous, right? So, um, yeah. in my mind, there was a lot of uh, there had to be a lot of telegraph, and, um, you know, I'm kind of waiting to see what happens now. Uh, after the fact, you know, kind of getting ahead of ourselves, but yeah, I well, I mean, <laughs> we can talk about that part here. So, I mean, now, I mean, what do you, what could, do you think by the time this is live? Like when we, when we make this clip, it could be overcome by events, right? Because right yes. now, as we speak, the Israelis are saying they're author, they're talking about a response. So, you know, if, if diplomacy fails, which I'm not saying one way or the other. I mean, they have the right to defend themselves. You know, I think people go back and they say, well, tit for tat, right? The Israelis killed the general and now they're doing this. But that's bullshit. The Iranians have been poking through proxies for decades. Like, this is not the first thing they've done. Like, they have been doing stuff for a while. It's not just, oh, you killed our general. We're doing this. This is the first time they have overtly done something but it's not the first time they've been involved in something so i think it's well within their rights the israelis to respond now will they i don't know you know i don't, I don't know i'm not in the in the room with them i'm not part of the high level meetings i i don't know you know what they're thinking however it is possible that they use their f-35s to take out nuke sites uh it is possible that they go after the um areas that shot the the missiles you know the military targets that that shot these missiles at them right there is there is a possibility because you know they they do have the capability to do that so uh i i kind of agree with both sides right I, I i agree with you i say hey this was just for show but i think it was um irresponsible because what happens you know you can you can give them you can telegraph all day but it's like you've talked about with the houthi drones in previous times where it's like what happens when that one gets through i mean can you imagine if one of those cruise missiles had landed you know downtown tel aviv you know can you imagine because i mean dude it, it yeah it's it's luck, lucky and skill that they stopped it but yeah i mean you know there's I don't know. The other thing is, you know, the Israeli air defense is extremely robust, right? They call it the Iron Dome, right? And yeah. I mean, that's, it's capable of repelling, I'm going to say real attacks. I don't know if that's the right word, you know, not drones that are just, for lack of better words, droning in. What? Um, yeah, it's for rockets. It's mostly, I mean, that part is for the rocket. Like they have a layered right. defense system. <clears throat> right. And, you know, the whole... I, I don't know the whole tit for tat thing, you know, so I grew up in Saudi Arabia. I was there all through the eighties and nineties. And, you know, unfortunately there was a lot of, a lot of violence, uh, in that, in that region. And, you know, uh, at the school I went to, there was a lot of, uh, the, a lot of the kids I went to were sympathetic to the you know, Palestinians and their cause. And I, you know, I can see, I don't take sides in this man. Cause I can see both sides of it. I was there through uh, Gulf war, uh, 1991. And I, I saw, uh, firsthand some things that came out of the media that ended up not being tr not being true uh, in order to shape the minds of Americans, Westerners. So it's too early to kind of, in my mind, just my <laughs> fighter pilot opinion, it's a little too early to, uh, you know, declare hostile, at least for me. But if we're talking about just the, you know, the like tactically, what the heck just happened? Uh, and the fact that the Israelis with help from Jordan, which, you know, it's crazy to me that other Arab countries were, you know, helping them. Right? Well, they don't want they don't want to see this 
that, I mean, that's that's part of it is they like, oh, whoa, 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 easy. Right, right. Which is which is great. But it's crazy to think that, like, you know, we've been talking about it, they literally launched 300 projectiles. At them. And I don't care if they're slow moving drones like you're saying, man, like the odds of stuff getting through with with just sheer numbers is high. And thankfully, at least at, at, from what I've seen, you know, the casualties have, uh, you know, been low. Um, I don't know if anybody's been killed from these attacks. I I, I didn't see no, any there was that. a little girl that got injured. Was uh, there injured, so though? I mean, I, I mean, thankfully, like, no one. Yeah, I was like it was and she was she was I don't know where it was, but there was like a little girl that got hurt pretty bad. Yeah, well, that, that, that sucks, man. But I given given the sheer volume of uh, things shot at Israel, um, I just think. Even if this is a dog and pony show, dude, I mean, holy cow, really lucky. <laughs> right? well, it's a hostile now, act. It doesn't. I mean, right. so it, if I if I tell you I'm going to shoot you and I shoot you and miss, you know, or your bulletproof vest stops it, <clears throat> am I still not committing attempted murder? Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with that. Uh, it, it is a hostile act, but you know, in in the big picture you know obviously the ball right now is in israel's court right yeah it's their it's their turn to do or not do i think the united states stance is a you know we're not going to help you as far as you know participating in any kind of strike that could change tomorrow who knows but um you know it <clears throat> you know if it keeps going back and forth the natural tendency is to escalate then we end up in like movers text for one or three which is not what i think anybody well, wants Arguably, they don't need the help. Correct. I mean, the Israelis have a history of not needing help in situations like this. Yeah, I, I know. But, you know, nobody wants, you know, I, <clears throat> you know, nobody, nobody wants anything long and drawn out, especially, I mean, we just got done with a Middle East conflict that was long and drawn out. Right. I mean, yeah. um, country like Israel, man, I mean, that's their, you know, that's their home. Right. I mean, the, the worst thing you want to have is just violence on the other side mm -hmm. of your fence. Right. So. I don't know. It's dude. Uh, it's, it's, uh, interesting times we're in the, I, I will say that the videos of the air defense over oh, yeah. Israel well, at night was, was all right. spectacular. I mean, I, I witnessed Patriot batteries taking out a uh, scud missile like live in 90, 91. And I mean, the whole scud attack thing, as a kid to me was insane and it kind of brought back <laughs> like mini PTSD, right. Um, you know, memories of that. Um, so, I mean, but it was, it was pretty spectacular that the light show going on.